Do you know what is actually the best day of the week to day trade and why? I'm about to show you something that most of day traders don't even dream about and what all the trading gurus, coaches and experts think is absolutely impossible. Now, the reason why they think that is because they all learn the same courses on trading, like basic stuff like trade the trend, guys, that's not gonna make you any money. So if you're tired of your account going nowhere, if you're tired of losing money, pay attention. Now, I'm super busy trading, so I'm actually gonna have Monica walk you through details. Now, all the experts will tell you, don't trade on Fridays. Why? Because they've been taught and conditioned to think that. Because they don't know the secrets that I know. I'm about to reveal to you that exactly the opposite is true. The only day you want to day trade is on Friday. Check out some of my recent Friday trades. 1,000 to 4,300. 2,000 to 26,000. 2,000 to 53,000 day trading. 4,000 to 63,000 day traded. 4,000 to $144,000 in under eight hours day traded. The reason why they don't think this is possible because they don't know what I know and what my students know. Now check out my students, 195,000 in day trading profits recently. 356,000 in trading profits recently. If you've been going to countless webinars trying to learn how to trade if you've been taking courses where everybody's teaching you the same stuff over and over again no wonder why your account is stuck no wonder why you're trading the stock guys if you're tired of sales pitches countless webinars and all the same stuff that everybody's trying to teach you when it comes to day trading and swing trading let me show you how real trading is done watch me trade live right now 4k to 63k in under nine hours all trades are triple verified by independent agencies. Stop wasting time doing the same thing over and over again. Stop the excuses. This is real. This is possible. Let me show you how you can learn the formula that can allow you to trade like this. If you're ready to take your trading game to the next level, let's roll. Click the link somewhere around this video. Click the button somewhere around this video and watch now or forever regret not knowing the secrets that could have finally taken your trading game to the ultimate victory in a Super Bowl of trading. Let's roll. Ready to take your trading skills to the next level, guys? Let's do this. I'm going to have Monica take it over from here on the next page. Make sure, don't be shy, say hi to Monica. She is ready to reveal the secrets of trading like a rock star. Just click the watch now button. Be nice to her. Don't be flirting now. Click the watch now button and let the show begin. All right, guys, welcome. This is Brandon from 13 Market Moves, and I'm here to present to you that there is danger ahead. Today is September 14, 2020. Um, we have a whole week ahead of us, and um, there is some observations that we've been making and some conclusions that we have come to. Namely, there is a historical and implied volatility inversion, and we're going to go over what that means and what's happening here. Okay, so historical volatility and implied volatility inversion will lead to significant market dislocation. And I know that we began to correct a little bit, but we have not started any type of these moves. And this inversion is ominous for many reasons, and we're going to go over those reasons. Number one, there is a significant activity by retail traders, namely the Robin Hood crowd and those who missed out on the run-up are now beginning to buy the dips with a ominously eerie lack of institutional involvement, meaning the big boys, the mutual funds and the, the banks and the, the big active multi-billion dollar traders, they are noticeably absent. 
Second thing that um, supports this is that our put to call ratio is not even close to being bearish. So what is going on here? So one of the things that we want to talk about right now is the put to call ratio. This green line right here is the SPX, the broader index. And I want to kind of bring your attention to February 2020 and leading into our March crash. When you look, when leading up to that plateau before it crashed, our put to call ratio was at 0.45. When you look at our blow off top as at, at the end of August, as the markets kept on going up higher and higher without any rest, our put to call ratio was significantly lower at 0 0.40, which meant that there was absolutely no fear in the marketplace and people were buying calls like you would not believe. Then we had a pretty significant um, pullback, as, as you can see, but that's being led by a lot of the high Momo and beta stocks that have led the way down. However, even with this S&P 500 or SPX coming down significantly, we have not had a significant rise, not even close, of our put to call ratio rising. We went from merely from 0.4 to 0.67 and as the call buying was happening you saw this beginning to rise typically when the um, volatility when you see a market rising you rarely see okay you rarely see this rising put to call ratio because this just means that people are buying puts i wonder who's buying the puts it certainly isn't the retail traders and if it was the silent institutional buying in, of the um, puts and gamma hedging that was occurring and we know what's happened with the soft bank but that's another story in itself but those are the kind of the gamma hedging um, plays that has led to this dislocation that is coming so without talking about that i want you to understand as the market was rising a lot of puts were being bought but not in a significant amount because there just wasn't a lot of institutional involvement but it certainly wasn't the retail that was buying this okay so this is ominous this is a silent distribution that was happening as the market was going on typically when the market rises we expect that put to call ratio to stay below or even further go down further and that did not happen okay so let's look at the other issues historical volatility denoted by hv and iv is the implied volatility inversion is forcing buy the premium instead of sell the premiums action within the market. Why is this? Because it's technically, if the historical volatility is higher than the implied volatility, that means that the calls and puts are at a discount. And so regardless of what's being bought, this is ca causing more of the directional plays to occur. And in, namely, we see that based on our analysis, there is a lot more call buying that's going on, retail traders, not institutions, than there are any type of um, institutional involvement. Okay, because the premiums are cheap. However, in the context of the VIX, as the VIX is basically rising as the stock is rising and as the stock is declining the VIX is declining and I'll go over that with you um, in just a little bit but that's what's going on that's what I mean by the inversion technically the VIX and the S&P 500 or any of the broader indexes even the NQs or the Dow um, should be moving in inverse of each other as the uh, stock market rises the VIX should decline as the stock market declines the VIX should be going up and given the amount of, of the velocity at which we had pulled back after um, the August top, we haven't seen that. We instead see uh, the markets moving in tandem with each other. The VIX and the markets are moving in tandem. If the market goes down, the VIX goes down. If the market goes up, the VIX goes up. Okay, VIX is a volatility index. VIX rises in the times of sell-offs and corrections, and VIX declines in a bull market or a bullish trend. And that has not happened at this moment. So, I want you to understand that when the historical volatility and IV inversion happens, it basically causes more speculation and by buying premiums instead of selling them. So there's not a lot of hedging going on. But... 
This leads to increasingly directional bets by retail traders on the call side. But we all understand that the market makers, your brokerages, or whoever sells you those contracts has to hedge their delta and the gammas. And if you don't know what those mean, um, please look into um, signing up for a course. So basically what happens is, is that the increasingly directional bets by the retail side is causing um, the market makers to take the other side of that trade, but they're also going into the futures and hedging that position, which is causing these um, speculative excesses that are happening. On top of that, the volume is noticeably absent, indicating lack of institutional participation right here. So there is a also seeming lack of panic in the marketplaces. So let me demonstrate to you what I'm talking about on this HV and IV inversion. I'm going to be going over some of the cues and our favorite momentum stock of the decade, if not of all time, Tesla. And then I'll compare that to something staid and slow like Home Depot, for example. So let's go into our options chain really quickly. So here we are. We're looking at Home Depot right now. When you go into today's option statistics, this is how you can utilize this. When we look on Thinkorswim, this is what I'm using. When we get into this account, you can see that the current IV percentile is, implied volatility is 37%, but the current historical volatility percentile is 14%. And you would expect to see that in a kind of a uptrending bullish market, even if they're go undergoing a correction. This is the right configuration we want to see, that we want to see that the IV or implied volatility, which is a measure of the future moves in the stock market to be higher. But here's what's going on. And this is what you need to pay attention to. Let's look at Tesla. Okay, so we have Tesla. What's happening with Tesla's current IV is 47%. And then the historical volatility is higher, 73%. And yet Tesla is trading near the all-time highs ever. This thing has gone up literally like four to three to four hundred percent within the last two or three months. Okay, you would expect a opposite to be true. You would expect the IV percentile to be higher than the H historical volatility. Now, a common wisdom would tell you that because of this, that the calls um, are cheap and that you should be buying up a storm, and people are. But at the same time, puts are also cheaper also. This is an ominous sign. This is the IV and historical volatility inversion. And there, this is one of the reasons why we believe that the um, volatility index or the VIX is not behaving right. Okay, That happened, if you want to go back, and we'll do another um, segment on this, during the financial market crisis and also during um, right before the dot-com bubble burst. Let's look at another one. Let's look at Amazon. Okay, these are all the high flyers that have led the market up. The breadth was terrible. This market ran up from the March lows on, on the backs of maybe 10, 15 stocks, mainly the FANGs and the Qs. Okay, let's look at the current IV percentile. Okay, even here, IV is slightly lower than the current a historical volatility percentile. Okay, it should be completely opposite. And since we are technically, even with this correction, we are in a bullish quote unquote uptrend, which is about to be broken. Let's look at Apple. Look at Apple's historical volatility percentile, 42%. Look at our current IV percentile, 37%. That has inverted. Let's look at Zoom. Current historical volatility percentile is at 99%. Current IV percentile is 46%. This is very, very ominous when coupled with the fact that there is no lack of volume, that the put-to-call ratio shows absolutely no signs of fear, which is increasing complacency, and the volume is low, low, low. Now, what this means is that basically that the, uh, the big institutions are sitting waiting in the wings and for a gamma hedging uh, corrective phases to occur. And if the gammas get crushed like it's getting now and 
the supply of retail buyers starts to diminish, we're going to see the trap door open up in this situation. Let me look at one more thing. Let's look at something like, um, um, let's see, Conagra, CAG. Okay. Even with Conagra, look at this. Even something as state as Conagra, which is a food company, okay, and a farm company, 21% historical volatility, IV percentile rank is 16%. There is something really, really wrong about the situation currently. How does this impact the VIX? What the heck is going on, right? I've told you kind of right now the VIX, how it should behave. When the market goes up, the VIX should decline precipitously. Given the amount of velocity and the blow off top we had, VIX should be trading literally like a 9 or 10 or 11. That hasn't happened. We've hit as high as 32, 36 as the market grinded higher and higher in August. Conversely, now we've had a corrective phase and it's pretty, um, you know, significant. We're having a pretty decent sized pullback, yet the VIX is still right around 26, 27, sometimes 30. What is going on? Why is the VIX not going higher? Given the type of corrective phase we had over the last two weeks, the VIX should be well above in the 40s. So what's going on? Well, declining VIX while stocks decline and rising VIX while stock rises, okay, we kind of went over that situation. Okay, so let me show you those examples. So this is the, uh, the volatility index. And so we know that um, in August, as the stock market was um, beginning to move continue to um, rip higher, we did not break below this 21 level. In fact, as it went higher and higher and higher, the VIX also went higher and higher. And as we started to decline in the last uh, few, uh, few weeks, we saw an initial spike and then a decline in the VIX. As we're declining, normal um, type of a move we would want to see is that we want to see this VIX at the 40. So there is definitely a ominous trend right now and that is only because there is a silent distribution that's going on but it's not in the abject selling by the institution outright shares just yet it is being masked by retail investors activity in call buying and speculative access they're buying the dips at the current moment number two Couple that with the increasing inversion of HV, which is the historical volatility, which is higher than most stocks than IV, implied volatility, which is lower, that is causing the dislocation. So what that means is that IV should be much higher right now, and that has not happened. IV is decreasing as it relates to the historical volatility. That does not happen in a healthy market. Second, because of the lack of the volume, there is no institutional participation on the bullish side of the trade. This is completely retail driven. The retail call buying is always met by market makers who take the other side of the trade. And as the supply of retail call buying or dip buying diminishes, that's when we're going to see some major dislocation and re reversion to the norm. Okay, Basically what's going to happen is, there's going to be short volatility and futures hedge that will happen. Okay, This will lead to sharp bounces that continuously fade. I also wanted to mention that there is a divergence in the 13 market moves of proprietary data that we count from the broader index S&P 500 to the NQ, which is the QQQ, which is the one that is taking the brunt currently of the sell-off because of the excess that was present. What you'll notice is that we had a Labor Day basically right here. That Labor Day was um, that Labor Day was a day off. But when you count those two significantly together, we've been getting a lot of threes, move threes, which is a very bearish move on the NQ, followed by one day of a sharp rise. Okay, As it's going up, you see that the VIX has stayed within the 30 range, Okay, and then finishing at the 28th, but it just hasn't declined on the up days. On the down days, the VIX continues to stay higher. On the down days, VIX, starts to come down now and on Friday we had another move three and so what we see is that the VIX is going
going down. It was declining as the market was declining. This does not happen normally. This can only lead to the fact that there is a ominous shaking that is coming within the market at the current moment. So this means that every couple of days, you know, it's not always going to be set in stone, that there's going to be a sharp bounce that's going to be faded. Okay, the reason why it's fading is because the velocity at which the retail uh, investors are buying and dip buying will fade, and then the true nature of what's going on underneath from the major market makers is that they are distributing these shares, and that will accelerate. And as that accelerates, we believe that we're going to get a pretty decent corrective phase. The trap door doesn't open until institutions have completed their selling of their bullish positions onto these FOMO crowd, these retail investors that have basically been conditioned to buy the dip, and that basically it is, they're going to be the bag holders, okay? They're going to sell onto these unsuspecting Robinhood amateur retail traders that have known nothing since March other than if you buy the dip, it keeps going up. In fact, hell, we've been accustomed to that for the last, uh, since the, uh, the financial crisis, have we not? Just buy the dip, buy the dip. Now, these market dislocations are going to be often, it's going to happen. Look what happened in March, and if you go back previous year into the October, and these market crash dislocations are going to happen every four to six months because of these, and that time frame is going to be shorter and shorter. The current market environment right now is one of that, that you have to short the bounces that are happening, okay? So on top of all that, we want to add to the fact that divergence of Momo King, NQ, and QQQ from broader markets, when you compare it to the Dow and ES, uh, we just showed you the calendar, is diverging, meaning that NQ and QQQ is abjectly just selling off and selling off, while the Dow and ES is kind of holding path. Sell-offs and fangs, QQQ, NQ is not accompanied by a whoosh or the velocity or that the fear, okay? There is no fear factor here. It is a slow grind down and it basically any type of rips will hit a certain level when the retail buying um, diminishes, then the supply and demand curve changes. However, the retail crowd keeps coming in and buying the dips. That's what we believe is happening. It will be followed by sharp one or two day and sometimes intraday TRO, which is the trend reversal opportunities. So, expected range for daily and weekly moves are also outsized. So the IV calculation on your option chain really denotes what the market makers are expecting for that stock to trade within the week. And we're blowing through that by 20 to 30 percent. These increases in uh, moves from the calculated IV is another evidence that there is significant market dislocation that is coming. Yet, there is no panic in the market yet. The put to call ratio is subdued. Yes, it's sort of rising, but there is absolutely no fear. And that's what's dangerous about this market. We believe that in the coming weeks to months, we're going to have one hell of a choppy market, okay? You can make money on both sides, but the market eventually will crack and there will be a trapdoor much similar to what's happened in March. We're going to have wide expected ranges of move that's going to be profitable for, for both the bulls and the bears, favoring the bears. And this is ominous, depending on where your market thesis resides. If you're a bull, I'd watch out. Now, we looked at the options chain. And we looked at Tesla, QQQ, Amazon. IV is actually lower than the historical volatility. We went over that. How do you think then this will end? Okay, Because once it reverts to the mean and the IV starts to get pumped, okay, then the options premium will get expensive. And by that time, it would be too late if you're um, levered on the bullish side. What will be the expected behavior of the markets over the next three to nine weeks? What do you think is going to happen here? This is a very dangerous market if you're buying the dips and only think that market goes straight up and all you have to do is buy the freaking dips. Right now, it's a slow grinding market decline for a few days followed by one or two days of sharp rallies, which is what's really happening in the um, futures market right now. Which well, let's, let's go look at that, okay? Let's look at that right now. Here we are. We're watching the ES. We'll go over the chart. Today is really September 13th. We made a double double bottom on Friday and market started to rip up. Okay, now it's very possible that this is going to make a move 11 type of a move, but you see these rips. Okay, 
that lasts probably like inch a day to maybe a day or two okay and then it's going to hit its top and it's going to just sell off right now when we look at these es right now it's up about 37 points okay let's look at uh, the nqs same thing hit a bottom on friday and we are going up and now we're running into resistance right here okay is it going to make a move 11 which is like a pyramid type formation by the time market opens it's very very possible and these moves occur pre-market and after market majority of these moves pre-market see this move 11 we think the same thing's going to happen notice the declining levels okay you should not be buying the dips down here it's very very dangerous you should be shorting the tops You gotta short the bounces, okay? You, it's a sucker's play. You can do it for, as a sh quick short day trade. You can game the system, but I'm telling you right now, you should not be buying thinking that the, it's gonna go back to the moon, that this is a buying opportunity. It is a shorting opportunity at this moment. So the conclusion is this. Buckle your seatbelts, okay? Do not buy the dips. If you do buy the dips, make sure you have a defined time frame. Understand that you can ride this up and make sure that you short the tops. Market makers will unwind their gamma hedges, which will create hard resistances and swift sell-offs, followed by bounces that look like um, the bottom is in. As retail call buying decelerates or it ends, because you know retail cannot be buying all the time constantly, okay? There's no fear yet. Watch the put to call ratios carefully. If that put to call ratio starts to accelerate, look out below, okay? Violence in which the stock moves both up and down will be extreme. So there's gonna be opportunities if you're nimble. Okay, so I've given you examples of that, okay? Divergences in fangs and high momos or beta stocks are highly concerning if you're a bull because it's these stocks that basically had the melt up. The rest of the market did not participate. So here are the key takeaways. Expect sharp bounces that get faded. Expect move or IV. Expect a move or IV will be outsized. Okay, Meaning that there's going to be sharp trading opportunities. This is going to be a day trader's paradise actually coming in. Okay, Creating huge opportunities to the downside and decent opportunities to the upside as long as you know your limits. Okay. If you are patient and know how to pick your levels, understand the market moves and understand the divergences and understand that there is this gamma hedging that is going on, that there is a basically bag holders being created to the retail investors who are daring to buy these stocks right now. And um, they're going to just continuously be being fed as fodder for the market makers. They're going to laugh all the way to the banks. So my message to everybody is do not buy the dips thanks brendan for sharing your insights and outlook on the market guys if you have any questions about anything in this video if you're sitting there right now asking yourself how do i actually use this information in order to place specific trades trades like we show you on this channel all the time like 3k to 50k 2k to 14k uh, 4k to 100k plus if you're not sure how to use this information that was just disclosed to you in this video, guys, definitely schedule a 20-minute coaching call. Learn specifics that you will need in order to execute on this information, such as what are the specific stocks that we're looking to trade in? What are the specific strike prices to get in on those stocks? How to execute your entries and exits? So if you're looking to advance to the next level, and take advantage of this crazy market condition with, of course, the next 90 days. Okay, we are ready to provide you with a skill set that will take your account to the moon. With that said, guys, take action right now. Click that link in the description somewhere below this video and get that 20-minute coaching call scheduled. It costs you absolutely nothing. You have nothing to lose and so much to gain. So let's rock. Make it happen. Take action. And we'll see you on the next video soon. Let's rock.